Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Title's a little bit clickbaity for you. How to get the perfect finish on your 3D prints. Today's video brought to you by Replicotes. Before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so today guys and dolls, what we're taking a look at is Replicote. Now this stuff is not particularly cheap. This is 75 pounds a liter, right? But I, like a lot of you guys, love lovely, nice and smooth finished prints. So, um, so this isn't really for everybody every day, right? That one liter goes really far like really far. You're only applying really thin coats of this stuff. Um, so you're not, you're not using loads of it. However, if what you're doing requires a pretty much perfect surface finish, you really aren't going to get a better one with this. Probably like a lot of you guys, I've watched um, a couple of videos, one of which is by Uncle Jesse and a couple of other guys as well, where they have thinned down UV reactive resin, so the stuff you use in, in resin printers, um, and they've applied that onto models, and it has given a pretty good surface finish. This is a different beast. So this here is the resin that you put on. It is a four to 100 ratio. So let me just explain that in a bit to be clearer. What it means is, is that you put 100 milliliters of this, or 100 grams of this, into a cup, and for every 100 grams, you add four grams of this thinner. I put 50 grams in a cup, I was able to do this and recoat a large amount of our Terminator as well. So these parts here, which I will just show you, I don't know if you can see on the camera, these printed on our artillery Hornet, and I will be honest with you and say, they are very good quality prints. The problem is, is that they print like this, and because FDM is FDM, we're doing layer upon layer that's gradually walking its way out and then gradually walking its way back in. And what that means is that although we have a pretty good surface finish, it's not perfectly smooth. That is the nature of FDM. It's the print orientation that we printed this in. Unfortunately, this line here isn't flat, so we couldn't put it like that to then print straight up. We would have got a better surface finish if we'd have been able to do that print orientation. But these are car doors for the uh, for the... Um, Chevrolet Corvette that we are doing, or that Mike, I should say, is doing at the moment. What we want to get on that Corvette is the smoothest finish we can possibly get, right? We want to make it look like car paint. So, enter Federer. Replicote have sent us a decent amount of, uh, of, of their finisher. They have also sent us some of their catalyst. They've also given us a little bit of thinners as well. The thinners really help this to go a lot further. So you don't need a lot of thinner in this, but a little bit in does just thin it down so you get a really nice thin coat rather than this is meant to be a, a door that actually opens. It sits on a hinge. So the problem is, is that if we coat this thing in, um, in resin and then we try to fit it, all the fit on the panels will be wrong because the resin will add too much thickness. A little bit of thinners, and you're laughing. The other piece that I wanna do this on is my Captain America. So we have here our Cap America. You can see here he has his shield. He also has a Mjolnir. 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 Mjolnir? Mjolnir. He has his hammer. So this... <laughs> Uh, what I want to do is there is detail on this hammer that I don't want to lose. So keep an eye out for this video because I'm not going to show you him finished. I'm just going to show you these, but I will be using it on this model. So we're going to do the doors. 
Um, we will be doing the whole car in this replica because the whole car's finish needs to be that paint smooth. Um, I've tried it out, I've done a few test pieces. Um, what I found is really, really good is you apply it to the model and then you get a very, very, very fine um, wet and dry sandpaper, a little bit of moisture on it once it's fully cured and dried, which takes about 48 hours. You give it a light sand and then you paint. And by a light sand, I mean two passes, if that, one pass, just a quick rub, just to get off any high points or anything like that. The other thing that you need to be really careful of is you have to make sure that your part is clean. No dust, no particulates, nothing. Same with your brush as well. One thing I will tell you is that this resin, once it cures, is very, very hard. <laughs> and you pretty much want to kiss goodbye to whatever paintbrush you're using. So get yourself down to B&Q or Lowe's or whatever's closest to you and buy the cheapest paintbrush you can possibly find. All you are trying to do is apply it, right? You just need to give the coat. It is self-leveling, so you don't need to worry about, um, about, uh, you know, about the quality of the brush or anything like that. You will more than likely have to throw this brush away afterwards. I haven't found anything yet that gets all of that resin off the brush, so yeah. Before we get started with this. These are relatively harsh chemicals, so it's very important that you wear correct PPE. I turned myself into a Rick, Morty! Morty! I turned myself into a Rick! PPE! If this stuff gets on your clothes, gets in your hair, gets in your eyes, gets on your hands, it's quite burny. So we have to be very, very careful. So I'm even going to pop on my safety goggles because I enjoy my eyesight, it helps me look at things. So all we're going to do here is we are going to pop this onto, makes me feel very official in a lab coat, doesn't it? Look at that, look how official I look. Okay, so let's open up this. So we want to pop in 50 grams of this, 50 grams, put that lid back on straight away. I am in a ventilated garage when I'm doing this. I highly recommend you do something similar. So we've got 51, 52 grams. So again, because I'm doing half, that is a 100 to 4 ratio, right? Because I'm only doing 50 grams of resin, so I only need 2 grams of activator. And then what we're going to do as well, is we are just going to open up these thinners, and we're going to pop a little bit of thinner in there as well. All of this stuff is available from Replicote's website. I'm gonna, oh, that's useful. A cap within a cap. Come on. No. There we go. Right, pop a little bit of thinners in there. So again, I'm in a ventilated garage. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're in a ventilated space as well. To be honest with you, the best place to do this is outside. Um, this is not an indoor activity, but you'd never hear me with a microphone outside because it's very windy at the moment, so. Here I am, risking my overall health for you. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a gray paste in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna coat one of these and we're gonna leave the other one untreated. Once this is dried, 
will come back and we will give it a coat of, um, of black gloss spray paint after I've just given it that one, that one pass of a sanding. So, make sure you've also got something down because if this gets on stuff, it's staying on it. So here we go, so we're just nice and thin coat, try to avoid drips. Again, this is self-leveling, so you don't have to worry too much about getting it perfectly even. You want to try and make sure it's a fairly thin coat, because again, we don't want this to end up going to do the inside as well. So you'll see this is from one dip of the paintbrush. So 50 grams of this will go really, really far because there's still an awful lot of it in there and I'm not using that. So just go over that front, make sure that's nice and even. Make sure we've got no drips. And then we will just leave that to dry. And then whilst we're here, we're also going to give that Cap America shield a quick once over as well. This is the reason why we want it thin. So we want it thin because we don't want to lose any of the detail on the model. Um, we don't want it to fill in all of the gaps of where his shield segments are. We don't, want it to, we don't want it to cover up the star or anything like that. We just, want, we just want to try and create that illusion of metal. And obviously one of the main properties of metal is that it's very, very smooth. So I wouldn't be using this on most of my models. Um, I'd sort of focus a bit more in dialing in my settings. But anything that's got armor on it, Armour needs to be as smooth as possible because otherwise it just doesn't look like metal. Yeah, most metal doesn't have a texture to it. So let's pop that on there like that. Very nice. And we're just going to get a bit on Mjolnir as well, making sure that we get over as much of that as possible. Very nice. On the back there. Just want to make sure the coat's not too thick. But again, when you put when you pass that sandpaper over it a couple of times, you'll knock out any of the brush strokes or anything else that you see. So that is our Cap America done. And that is our car door done. I'm trying to stay away from doing anything with the hinges because I just don't want to uh, to ruin those tolerances that it has. There we go. So there's not really anything on this at the moment. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have any drips or anything like that. So, as I said before, the reality is, is this paintbrush is now dead to me. Um, <laughs> we're not going to be able to use this for anything else. Um, I've tried rinsing it. I've tried paint thinners. I've tried uh, IPA and things like that. And this resin. Yeah. And the same goes with whatever you're mixing in as well. So, um, I mean, for context, I've done, I've done that whole shield and I've done this uh, car panel. I would say, I mean, I would say I've not even used a tenth of what was in there. So that's, that's almost exactly how much as when I originally mixed it. So I could have done considerably less than that to do these parts. I would bet that if I had the whole car in front of me, I'd probably need about 60 grams of this to do the whole car. And the car that we're doing is about 700 millimeters long. So it is large. Um, there's a lot of panels to cover. This one coat over the lot and you'll get that lovely finish. So through the magic of cinema, let's stop this and let's go and see what the finished product looks like. Welcome back, like a Blue Peter moment. So 
I will do some close-ups in a second, but these two parts are night and day different. Night and day different. I, I cannot believe how smooth this looks. If I didn't know that I'd printed both of these on the same machine, there's no way that I would believe that they were both done on the same machine, same filament, everything, but this one has just had that coat of Replico. So let's do a little bit of a close-up. Already before I pick these up, you can already see some of the difference. So this is the part and this has had a coat of black gloss spray paint on it. Now, it's a good part, but you can still feel very much there is a texture to that. And you can see when I move this into the lights, you can see that, okay, there's a bit of a, a, a paint, you know, a paint splodge there, but you can see that this hasn't come out smooth. It's come out nice and it's a good quality print, but it's not smooth. Then we look at this part. So for a start, if I hold this up here, you can see me and the camera. Hello. <laughs> there we go. So, um, so I mean that absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Really, really nice. And again, just to prove this isn't a resin printed part, I haven't coated the back or painted the back of this. So that is how it did look. Again, not a bad part at all. Not a bad part. But look at that. Look at it. Absolutely flawless. Really, really nice. I'm so, so chuffed with that. So, evaluation time. Should you be buying some of this Replico? Now, I wanna be clear, as I said already, this is 75 pounds a litre. A litre will go a long way, but 75 pounds isn't nothing, okay? That being said, I've tried the brushing on of regular resins, the UV reactive ones. Um, I have never had a part come out like that. This is, and I want to be clear about this, this is a tool for a job, right? This is a, I need a specific part to be as smooth as I can possibly get it. I don't want to, or I can't print it in resin, okay? I can't for whatever, you know, I don't want to, there's, there's, the, you know, I don't have a resin printer that's large enough or the part doesn't fit or I don't have a resin printer or whatever. I have to print it in FDM, but I need these particular parts of it to be as smooth as possible. I'm not going to be coating every model I have in this stuff, right? I'm not. But am I going to be using this moving forwards as much as possible, especially when it comes to metal parts? Absolutely. And when this runs out, I'm buying more. This is, a, this is an amazing tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to the types of 3D printing that we do. Again, we do quite large models. I wouldn't have used it on something like our, um, our, battle, uh, our TIE Fighter or anything like that. And I wouldn't have used it on anything like Sauron. But I have used it on that Captain America, which as you can see, he's still sitting here waiting to be painted. Hold on to the channel to, uh, to see how he looks when he's finished. And I would have used it on my Hulkbuster. I'm more than likely going to be doing a, um, an Iron Patriot very soon. Um, and I will more than likely end up using it on that because those armor panels have to look like metal for the overall effect of the model to work. And something like this, absolutely astonishing. I will put a link in the video description to both where you can buy Replico and to Replico's Instagram page. Um, because if you go on there, you can actually see some of the th things that they did. And for those who are on the Facebook groups, you will see, and I want to be clear, on, face on, on the groups that are on Facebook. I don't call it the Facebook. Um, <laughs> So on, on the groups that are on Facebook, you will have more than likely seen the large Hulk that Replicote did for the TCT show this year. And they used this stuff over all of it. They printed that with a very large layer height. If I remember rightly, he was a, 
I think he was a two mil nozzle, uh, or a one point eight mil nozzle, and it was about a one a one mil layer height or something. It was a it was a big layer height anyway, so that they could print him quick enough. They coated him in this, and they actually thinned it enough so that they could spray it from um, from a regular paint like an air assist paint gun, um, and they coated it. And you would never know that that model was three D printed if you didn't tell me that it was. I wouldn't guess. Absolutely astonishing the quality that came out of that. Um, I mean, that being said, guys, what else is there to say? If you've got the money and you've got the and you've got a need for it, there is no better finishing product that I have ever used than Replico. And I mean, again, it it is a little toxic, so you have to be careful when you're using it. And it's a tool for a job. It's not you're not dipping every model you've ever done you've ever done in it. You're not using it time and time again, but if you've got metal parts, car parts, you've got things that need to be smooth, you're not gonna find a better resource to use than that. Absolutely fantastic. Check out all the links in the video description. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again very soon.